I am Marcello Perillo, um, 27 year old, uh, ex master student here in Bonn University. And the research we published in PRJ uh, was um, both exploratory and uh, some of uh, experimental uh, research. We first wanted to uh, analyze uh, the histology of what we call uh, we called mystery bones. Mystery bones because they were um, these mysterious uh, pieces of fossil bone that were found uh, since the 18th century, uh, late 18th century, uh, early 19th century. Uh, first in England, then all ab across Europe, in France, uh, also uh, sometimes in Switzerland. Um, mystery because these are big lumps of bones that are not really diagnostic. They are quite smooth, they are cylindric in shape, and uh, people came up with uh, different hypotheses regarding the nature, first as uh, labyrinthodons, so giant amphibians, uh, then as dinosaurs, lung bones perhaps, or uh, even as, for example, ichthyosaurs, marine reptiles. Uh, but we never really had a proper uh, way to uh, define these bones morphologically because they are so undiagnostic most of the time. Uh, so we resolved to use histology, so the study of the microstructure of the bone, to see whether or not we could detect any sort of signal uh, in these bones. Uh, usually what we would expect is that uh, closed taxa, closed pieces, do present the same type of histology or somehow um, uh, signals that uh, might give us uh, a good uh, idea to understand the taxonomic relationship between them. And so we took a uh, piece of bone similar to this one here, this comes from France for example, and we took cores, as you can see here, this one as a little hole and from this course, we, uh, or from also uh, entire uh, cross section of the bones, uh, for example, here we took an entire cross section, here where the uh, white part is, we made up thin sections, something like this, that can be then studied with a microscope, with a polarized microscope. And by using both cross polarized light and a circular polarized light, we um, could verify that these bones have all the same histology, the same microstructure of the bone, and that it um, is uh, diagnostic for uh, what we understand are giant ichthyosaurs in the late Triassic. We could reject the idea that these bones might represent, for example, lung bones of dinosaurs uh, of or other terrestrial archosaurs, and we could verify um, on a second hand that we also have something extremely peculiar going on uh, with the histology of these bones because um, what we see in these giant ichthyosaurs lower jaw uh, is that um, the histology is not like the one that we have seen before uh, that is uh, described in classical literature. It's something that is for some reason akin to what we call a metaplastic bone or uh, to uh, what we see in uh, dermal bones of other animals, uh, but with a mix of characters that make them completely unique. Um, this is one other part of the, of the, of the story. So after re re realizing that we have this extremely unique histology, we went through and tried to understand if this histology is really unique and what it could be related to. Uh, we verified that there is a, a sort of um, structure uh, similar to um, carbon fiber structure that makes up the matrix of the bone of, uh, of these uh, giant joes and that there are uh, unmineralized collagen fibers inside the bone, there are uh, a peculiar way for uh, uh, vascularization to develop inside these bones, what we call secondary osteons develop inside primary ones and all these things still need somehow an answer but do hint us to the fact that something extremely peculiar was going on and that is likely related to the fact that these animals were really large, giant ichthyosaurs, we're talking about animals that are estimated by to the 20 to the 30 meters in length, and maybe with their way of developing or maybe with their way of feeding. Because uh, uh, when we think about, for example, what nowadays blue whales do when they're opening their mouth, it's one of the most um, important and energy uh, intaking act of biological um, engineering. 
just giant joes opening up in the middle of the sea. And probably something similar was going on here. First, we need to uh, sample most. Uh, we need more uh, histological research because these are um, uh, elements of the body of the skull that are not usually uh, analyzed. Uh, it's really rare to see uh, lower jaws, for example, to be histologically analyzed. So it would be extremely important for us to uh, enlarge the, the, um, the data in this sense. And of course, given the possibility, because the fossil record is somehow scarce regarding giant tick teasers, to further explore them, to further explore the biomechanics of their jaws, because if something extremely strange is going on from a histological point of view, then it is likely that they were doing something peculiar also, uh, ethologically speaking, uh, with their uh, feeding behavior. Um, and it's an important mystery how they disappear, because these giant, uh, these giant ichthyosaurs appeared uh, already in the early Triassic, but then somehow they disappear by the late Triassic, and we don't know what is going on by the uh, uh, early Jurassic, because there is a mass extinction event. And understanding more about these animals could lead us also to understand, as usual things, the uh, dynamics of mass extinction event, as the one that we are experiencing nowadays. And um, finally, um, that there is a huge variety of histotypes, bone types, in the fossil record that are still not understood and that uh, need to be framed outside of the classical way of framing uh, histology uh, in the paleontological literature. Because um, by now we understand that we have no distinct strict classes. We have spectrum of uh, biological structures and we need to be a little bit more uh, daring in uh, describing them. 